Hey everybody, welcome back to Serving Up Plumbing with David Butler. Today, we're talking tankless again. We're gonna be talking about electric tankless. But first, make sure and hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you like this video, and let me know what you'd like to hear in the future. So, let's talk tankless. As I mentioned, today we're gonna to be talking about electric tankless water heaters. Now, we talked about the differences in uh, gas and electric tankless water heaters and some basic things on them in a previous video, but today we're gonna to go a little more in depth on electric tankless. And where do we need them? How do they operate? How do they work? Those sort of things. Who's a good candidate for one and who's not? Electric tankless are good tankless water heaters. Now there are always some water heaters out there that are bad brands that are cheaper or not working as well, but by and far most tankless water heaters are pretty good. If you have an all-electric home and you're running out of hot water, you don't have a lot of options. A 50 gallon electric tank, you can go up from there to an 80 gallon electric tank, it doesn't give you that much more hot water and electricity takes a long time to heat up compared to gas. So electric tankless are pretty good in the event that you're running out of hot water all the time. But there are some things about them that are drawbacks. First of all, you can't run as many fixtures at a time with an electric tankless as you can with an electric tank. Now you're gonna run out a lot faster, of course. The electric tankless still does give you endless hot water. It just doesn't give you as much endless hot water at one time. So, a gas tankless will give you about 10 to 11 gallons a minute on the larger gas tankless for residential. The maximum you're gonna get out of an electric tankless is about four and a half, maybe five in the middle of summer. Now, some of them promise you seven gallons a minute and things like that, but I've yet to ever see an electric tankless give you that kind of flow. Most of the electric tankless are gonna give you about four and a half gallons per minute on the largest ones, and that means it's 28 kW to 36 kW. You don't get much difference from 28 to 36, so it's not a big advantage to go that large. The electric tankless does work great for those situations. It will give you endless hot water, but again, we said it's only gonna give you four and a half gallons a minute. So what does that mean to a customer? Well, do you take a bath? Bathtubs have to have at least four gallons a minute flow well, that's kind of maxing out your tankless. Plus, it's usually gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes to fill up your bathtub. By this time, your water's already getting cold. Now, yes, you have endless hot water, but it's going to take a long time to fill it up and the water's gonna start cooling off. So you're gonna to have to continue to add hot water to it. I don't usually recommend them where we have someone who likes to take a bubble bath or a bath every day. It just gets too frustrating on having to wait on the hot water to fill up the tub. But it's great if everyone showers in the house. An electric tankless will give you two, maybe three showers at a time. And again, they're gonna be endless hot water. So it's great if you're doing showers, not so great if you're doing tubs. If you have an electric water heater that's a tank type and you wanna go upgrade to something that'll give you endless hot water, an electric tankless will do that, but Make sure you're only doing mostly showers and not baths all the time. Now, if it's a little kid's bath and you're only putting four or five inches in the tub to bathe them, that'll be fine. It doesn't take that long to do it. But for a big, huge garden tub or Roman tub, like we call them, where someone likes to really, you know, sit in there, drink wine, have candles going, read a book, those are going to take a long time to fill up, and most people aren't going to be happy with that. Now, what are the disadvantages of it besides that? It takes a lot of electricity. Just like when we install a gas tankless, we have to upsize the gas a lot of times. We've already talked about that. The number one problem with gas tankless water heaters is they're not installed correctly. Well, the same thing can happen with electric tankless. Anytime you're gonna install an electric tankless, you need to get your electrician involved because he's gonna have to size your panel and make sure that you've got enough electricity in that panel to properly operate the tankless. And that's gonna also determine how large a tankless that you can get because the electrical demand. About the smallest electric tankless you can use on most homes is a 21 kW, which means it's 21,000 watts. Now from there, we go up to 24, 28, some of them are 29, then we go on up to 36 and even 39. You're not gonna gain that much between a 28 and a 36. You'll gain maybe a half gallon per minute. Between the 21 and the 28, you'll get to about four gallons per minute on it, four and a half even in the summertime. So that's pretty good. Now, there are smaller electric tankless and those would work great if you're doing it for a lake house, you've got a one bath house that most people are just gonna shower on the weekend and you can take shower after shower. Again, it's endless hot water. It's just not that much volume at one time. 
But on your normal house, two bath, maybe three baths, if you're doing mostly showers, the 21KW is a bare minimum. The 28 is what I recommend or a 36. The problem is again, we need to get that electrical sized. You may have to add additional wiring. You may have to even upgrade your panel or your service coming into your house, depending on what size the panel is. Most of the time, it's gonna take at least a 200 amp panel. So if you can tell whether you've got that or not, that's one of the first things to look at. The electric tankless is gonna do a good job for you. It's just gonna not give you as much hot water as one time as a regular electric tank. Let's talk a little bit more about an electric tankless and how it works. So in an electric tankless, it still uses old style water heater elements. Now, they may be a different wattage. Most water heaters that are tank type will use anywhere from a 3500 to 4500 to even up to a 5500 water heating element. Most of your tankless are gonna use anywhere from 7,000 to 9,000 watt elements, sometimes even more for residential. But the thing about that is it's still old technology. We're still heating water with elements, just like we do uh, on a tank type. They haven't come far enough, as far as I'm concerned, with the technology on electric tankless yet. I think someday we're gonna have it. Maybe it's gonna have Iron Man's power pack in it. I don't know. But we need somehow to heat the water faster and more efficiently than we do with the standard old elements. But that's what we've got right now. So with the pictures that we're going to be showing, you're going to see they've got standard elements. They've got thermostats in them. They operate similar to that. You have multiple elements in it depending on what size it is, 21, 28, 36. Most of anything over 14 to 16 kW is going to have four elements in it. That means there's going to be four elements in there that are going to be operating anywhere from 21,000 watts up to 36,000 watts. But again, these are still old school elements. They can still burn out if you don't have water in them. The thermostats can go out on them just like they normally do on a regular electric water heater and no power, no tankless. Now, that's the same thing with a gas tankless, except on a gas tankless, you could plug it into an electrical outlet on a generator or something else and still have hot water. On an electric tankless, you can't just plug a 21 kW or larger into an electrical outlet. So you have to have a generator on your home to run that. And it's a huge draw, so it may even be difficult with a generator on your house to hook up the electric tankless to it. It sounds like I'm against electric tankless. Well, understand, I'm not. We do install electric tankless, and we install a few of them, not near as many as gas tankless, because they do have drawbacks. But on a smaller house with the right habits that a customer has, not a lot of people bathing, it works really well, and it will give you endless hot water, and it is still more efficient than a tank top water heater. It gives you that endless hot water, not instant, but endless hot water, and it usually will last longer than a regular electric tank it's not gonna start leaking like the tank does. Most of the tanks on these are made out of either polymers of high temp plastic or of special materials that last a long time. So most electric tankless can be repaired and give you 20 years of life. So with the investment you have, you're still gonna get that endless hot water that you're looking for with a tankless. You're still gonna get higher efficiency. You just gotta be careful where you install it. You don't want to put it on a big house. You don't want to put it on a house where you bathe a lot in a bathtub. It's going to be great for showers. I know it kind of sounds like I don't like electric tankless, but believe me, I do. It's just you have to be very specific about where you install them and make sure you give your customer the expectations properly. A lot of information about electric tankless, right? If you have an all-electric home, it may be an option for you. Hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And let me know any information you might have about electric tankless experience that you've had. Also, make sure and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, tell your friends the butler did it.